Oh yes, welcome back to the Wasteland. We've got a ton of brand new official details thanks to a new thorough article from Game Informer which spills the beans about the map, the regions of the map. How long is the main quest going to be in this game? What type of quests can we expect from this game considering, you know, it is an online centric title for a Fallout game. So I have also included the source material in the description below. You can check it out for yourself. But we're going to be talking about a lot of stuff, including the hundreds of perks that are going to be appearing in this game, as well as some similarities to Skyrim. Can we expect dialogue to be part of your character's voice? What about that? And then also some cool information about the actual player count. We have official confirmation, finally, as to how many players will be on one server we've heard you know it's going to be dozens but we want an actual number for once welcome back my fellow vault dwellers and wasteland wonders we've got a lot to talk about let's do this so yeah let's go straight into the details by the way a very very special thank you to carton excuse me catarn 343 out on reddit for helping out and breaking down a lot of the information from the Game Informer article. It was a little bit long-winded, so he broke it down for us. So we're going to go over some of these details that he broke down. So let's do this. Again, source material in the description below. goes on to say the map is divided into six regions, but even the regions are divided into level zones. Now the Cranberry Bog, for instance, offers the most difficult areas in the game. You may, may have seen some of these uh, artwork pieces and screenshots, screenshots, excuse me, showing off, you know, red foliage and stuff like that, that's going to be the Cranberry Bog. Now, uh, aside from the radiation-generated zones that the players uh, create using nuclear warfare, again, Cranberry Bog is going to be one of the most difficult areas in the game, but they're basically saying here that you can create your own difficult scenarios by launching nukes, and it will make areas in uh, the map much harder because of that so that's pretty cool so you can up the difficulty on the map you're playing in now it says uh the game does scale with the player that enters a zone but it's in favor of the world not the player what that means is that if a level 40 player enters a zone the world will be around level 40 through 60 however the game does have some le levers in levers excuse me levers in place for solo players to succeed as well. So uh, you can see how the game kind of scales for you. Uh, again, this game uh, encourages co-op play, of course, and you can apparently play with people that are like level five, level 30, and somehow the game will know to scale. Of course, the ideal situation with this game is to play with someone that's, in my opinion, probably five to 10 levels within your level. That's gonna be more ideal. Now let's talk about side quests and PvP and more. It says there are side quests as well as new world events in which PvP is turned off. These world events are more geared towards groups and as such everyone in the server will get them. You can fast <clears throat> excuse me, you can fast travel to them. An example of an event in a mission is where you need to escort a group of robots to different locations and they will make comments on the locations you take them to. If they're alive at the end, you get a reward. World events give some of the best loot in the game. Ah, so world events do give some of the best loot in the game. Isn't that something else for sure? Now, I did also hear uh, with the loot system how it's going to work uh, is that loot will be heavily randomized. So if you're wanting to tell your buddy, hey, go to the church to get this type of gun, it might not be the case in Fallout 76 because loot is going to be, again, very, very much randomized. So creating a guide, for example, around finding a certain weapon might be a little bit more difficult in Fallout 76. Now, it does uh, speak a little bit about the Overseer. It says the Overseer left the vault before everyone else. The main quest line is long, longer than in other games because it takes you across the entire map. And at the end of the map, and at the end, the player is expected to be of a higher level. The quest finale has to do with launching your first nuclear bomb. After that, you can switch for access codes 
for other nuclear silos. So the in-game scenarios with this uh, game, Fallout 76, really involve nuclear bombs, which I think is pretty cool. It's like uh, the ultimate in-game gameplay, I guess you would say. Boom, look at that explosion. I cannot freaking wait. Now they talk about similarities to Skyrim. It says, similarly to Skyrim, some quests are immediately given to a player when they approach a location of or point of interest. For example, you come across, come close to a mine and a quest pops up telling you to explore the mine. The goal is to have the player full of tasks as soon as possible. Again, this design philosophy is similar to the gamey approach Bethesda took with Skyrim. Hey, I thought that worked well. I love Skyrim, so I have no complaints. If they're going to copy any game, hey, copy Skyrim with uh, how a lot of the questing worked. It was really more dynamic, and I loved how you can just run into stuff, bump into new people, get a mission that you weren't un undertaking in that moment, and then all of a sudden you have like two or three missions that you're kind of multitasking. If that's the way it is in Fallout 76, I'm going to be pretty happy. So, moving on, they say this, there is no dialogue in the game, and your character is voiceless. The NPC robots still speak, and you could still barter with some of them, but no real dialogue trees or choices. So be warned, if you're expecting this to have like multiple choices and multiple dialogue options, that's not going to be the case. Now, interestingly, Anthem is doing it a different way. They're having you go back to that fort, and then you will have dialogue trees and dialogue choices, and that will actually have an effect on the story. So it can apparently be done in a multiplayer atmosphere. Uh, let's see if Fallout, uh, you know, as a series, does adjust that with any online games in the future. Now they go on to say there will be hundreds of perk cards available on release, but, the, but Bethesda is planning to add even more in the future as well as themed cards probably for holidays and the like. Perk packs are given each five levels and cannot be purchased with real money. Now, here's the important stuff. How many players can be on one server? It says the cap is 24 players per game and four player squads. However, Bethesda implied that it's possible that the limit may be raised for special servers sometime down the road. Now, you can also fast travel with your teammates. Come on. Who's going to fast travel? Don't do it. No, I'm just kidding. If you have to fast travel, fast travel. But my ideal way of playing is really just to explore as much as possible and not fast travel. Alrighty then, they talk about robot NPCs here. It says, not all robot NPCs are generic vendors or fillers. There are some actual characters in the game with defined personas, but no details were given. Regardless, they are not the focus of the game. So it sounds like you're going to be roaming uh, around and r bump into some robots that are quite unique, very different from your average robot. So there's that. I don't know why they chose to voice only robots and uh, hollow tapes. I guess the hollow tapes might be uh, humans that record their voices, of course. Uh, so at least there's that. But it's definitely a different choice, and I still think I would still prefer just to be blind NPCs. You know, human NPCs and mutant NPCs and stuff like that. Uh, although there will be, you know, some sort of mutants in the game. That's been confirmed. Now, they go on to say this. You can build harvesters to harvest special resources near your camp. Like aluminum deposits, or is it aluminium deposits? But they go on to say, if you're playing in a group, the four players can connect their camps together so they can form bigger settlements. But after a player logs out of their segment, their, their settlement will be gone with them. So technically speaking, if all the players in the server somehow coordinate to build their camps together, they actually can. There are public settlements that are bigger and offer more res resources, but are also raided by battalions of hostile mobs. Okay, that's still very interesting here. So, uh, basically, it sounds like uh, you can work together, of course, and then, like, basically join together your settlements, which is cool. And, again, there will be those co-op settlements. Uh, but I'm still confused about this. They say, but after a player logs out, their segment will be gone with them. I think that's supposed to be settlement. So, sounds like uh, if you are the host of the game, perhaps your settlement remains. I'm curious to see how this is going to work. This is the interesting stuff. Uh, that I hope they kind of expand upon even more, but it sounds like the host 
of the game world will be able to keep his settlement around actually you'll be able to continue straight off with your game if you log out no matter what uh so yeah it's going to be very interesting to see what happens so if you take lesser valuable resources from another player's settlement like fruit or vegetables you're going to get in trouble interesting so uh be careful about stealing from other players in other words now, it goes on to mention this, as the map is four times the size of Fallout 4, it's less dense, with a bigger focus on distance between points of interest. However, it is still more packed with content than any other Bethesda game. It has a scary amount of content, said the game lead, Jeff Gardiner. So, that's interesting. So, bigger, but less dense. I hope there's not too much running around in this game. I hope there's still a lot of stuff to do in between uh, these bigger areas and it doesn't become known as like the next day Z where you're just running around. That's always the problem if you get too big with your map and you then because of that you need vehicles and it doesn't seem like there's vehicles in this game. I think it's been pretty much confirmed there will be no vehicles but still it's going to be really cool that's four times the size of Fallout 4 so it still sounds like there's going to be a lot more to do than Fallout 4. And a lot more in terms of variety with the actual uh, environments themselves, considering if there's actual regions in this game. Now they go on to say you can pick up power armor frames in your inventory after you run out of batteries in your fusion core. And then aside from thirst and famine, you, can all, you also need to watch out for radiation and toxic air. So there's... Various different things that you're going to have to be looking out for and that it doesn't sound like the article expanded upon thirst and famine I really want to know about this thirst and hunger, you know Are you going to die from it doesn't sound like you're going to actually die from it if I can speculate a little bit It could be more plausible uh, That this would negatively impact your perks and your skills if you get into, you know, a situation where you're really thirsty and really hungry, you want to keep that, those levels up to make sure your perks and abilities are at normal range. At least that's what I think is going to happen in this game. I don't think you're going to experience death from hunger and thirst. They didn't say that this is like a pure survival game. They were very, very adamant about that uh, when showing off this game. So I don't think that's going to be the case. But yeah, there it is, guys. A lot of new details. Uh, you know, about the perk system, um, the map space. I'm excited, so freaking excited for this game. You have no idea. It's one of my most anticipated games of 2018 for sure. Really digging these PvE experiences. I personally need a break from some of these PvE games. Uh, but uh, Battlefield looks pretty good, in my opinion, for some of these PvP games. But guys, yeah, stay tuned here. Two open world games for more open world gaming goodness. And of course, more Fallout 76. And yes, I will see you all soon enough in the wasteland. Take care.